okay, this video is going to do a walkthrough of how you might code a basket like this one in Tinkercad's code blocks. And it's made of different torus shaped rings and uh, has a base added. So we're going to do kind of a walkthrough. I'm going to be using this step function to walk through um, our code and kind of get an understanding of how you would create this and, and how it works and then how you might start experimenting with it. So I'm going to start, the way I like to start uh, a basket like that is by making a couple of uh, variables. So the first variable I'm going to create is called rings. And I like to think of variables as being like a plastic bin that you can put a label on and then store different things in it and you can put things in and take them out. So in this case, I'm creating a variable called rings and initially I'm going to put the number 12 in it. I'm then going to create a second variable, a second plastic bin. I'm going to label that rotation Z rotation degrees. And initially, I'm going to leave that bin empty. That variable is going to have a value of zero. Now, keep in mind that when you make uh, variables, you uh, drag out a create variable block. You want to drag it out, name a variable before dragging out a second block. Um, otherwise, it will rename both blocks when you go to um, use the, the rename variable drag down, uh, drop down menu here. Okay, so we have a couple of variables and then I'm gonna use one of my loop blocks, my repeat blocks, and I'm gonna say, okay, we're gonna repeat whatever's in the loop rings times. Well, rings is this variable we just made and it's got 12 in it, so the program is gonna see a 12 here. Okay, and so let's start stepping through that. So we create the first variable, create the second one. We say, okay, we're gonna use a loop now. We're gonna repeat 12 times because that's what's in the variable. The next thing is we're gonna add the torus shape. So it just popped into the middle of our work plane. And if we use the arrow here, we can specify different aspects of the shape. So. I'm making it a solid and I change the color here. This would make it a hole. Uh, I'm giving it a radius of 25. The sides are 12 and that's a, we'll play with all these numbers in a couple minutes, but right now it's got 12 sides. The tube or the thickness is, uh, uh, is two and then it's 14 steps. So that's kind of like the facets um, of the tube and We'll play with all these numbers in a minute. So I've just added that ring and it's showing up in the dead center of our work plane. So the dead center, uh, the red line here is our x axis. This is positive x, negative x. So it's at zero x. The green is y, positive, negative. It's at zero, centered on zero y. And then the blue is the Z axis, the up and down, and the torus is centered on half below and half under the Z axis also. So the, the next thing I wanna do, I make that torus shape, and then I'm gonna move it in a positive direction on the Y plane. So I'm gonna sort of slide it in this direction. So we'll step that. Okay, so it just slid up that green Y plane, our axis. Okay, now we're gonna, our next move is gonna to be to rotate around the X axis by 50 degrees. So I like to think of the X and Y, the red and green lines, as being like intersecting clotheslines. So if you were to spin something like a coat hanger around a clothesline, it would it would spin or rotate around the line like this, around X. Y would, would rotate around the green uh, axis. So we're gonna say rotate or spin around the X axis by 50 degrees. And because I'm not specifying the pivot point, it's going to pivot from its own center. So in this case, right, the, the center X is this line right here. So that's where it's gonna pivot from. So you can see it rotated at, around the imaginary clothesline that runs right through here, through the X dimension of, that, of the uh, shape. 
Next, though, we're going to rotate not around the X, but around the Z uh, by whatever's in the rotation degrees variable. Okay, so the Z, while the X and Y maybe are like clotheslines, the Z I think of as like a tether ball pull. So you can imagine if there was a tether ball hanging from this blue line it, and we spun it, it would spin like this. So we're going to start rotating our shapes around the Z axis. Now, though, initially, there, the Z rotation degrees variable has zero in it, so it's, it's not going to rotate at all. The other thing we want to do here is we do want to specify the pivot point. Here we didn't have to. It was pivoting around its own center. Here we're going to say, no, pivot around the base of the tetherball pole, essentially. right? So that's 0, 0, 0, where the three uh, axes originate. So I'm going to advance the code. It spins around Z by 0, because that's what's in the variable. But the plot thickens right here. We're going to change that variable. The variable will vary in this case. So we're going to change it by, and we're here we're going to use a math block. We're going to use, we, I dragged out this 0 plus 0 block, and I changed it to division. 360 degrees uh, is a circle. We want to distribute these rings in a circle evenly. So we're going to say 360 divided by whatever's in the rings variable. So we know that 12 is what's in the rings variable. So 360 divided by 12 is 30. So we're basically, by changing the variable by 360 divided by rings, we're adding 30 to the previously empty variable bin. And it doesn't affect anything immediately, except for it's changing what is in that bin. All right, we're going to go through. We're going to. We have 11 more repetitions of this loop. We're going to add a second torus shape ring. We're going to slide it up in a positive direction on the y axis. We're going to rotate it around that x axis by 50 degrees. So now the two rings are actually overlapping perfectly. Now, though, we're going to rotate around Z by whatever's in the rotation degrees variable, which last, uh, the first iteration through the loop, we added 30 to it. So now it's going to rotate 30 degrees. So, and then our next move will be to add another 30 on top of the existing 30. Okay, so now that bin has 60 in it. And this next loop, we're going to add a third ring, slide it, rotate it in an X, and now we're going to slide it around 60 degrees. And if we do that another time, it's going to slide by 90 degrees. And you can see from this angle that it's it's now we're now a quarter of the way around our our circle. So if I, I play this, I'm going to be doing the same thing over and over, but adding 30 to the variable each time. And at the end of my code, I'm going to say, all right, take all of those rings, select all, and move them up the Z, the tetherball pole axis, by 24. And then I'm going to add this uh, shape, this half sphere, and I've resized it, I've scaled it a bit, and moved it up slightly to form a base. And this was just trial and error. I just added the dome and then just started playing with these numbers to get a shape that, that I liked and that would provide a good base. Okay, speaking of playing with numbers, now we can start doing that. So, uh, I, and I recommend ex playing with these numbers one at a time so you can really see what is uh, being affected. I'm going to speed up our, our the way our code runs here. So. What if we said, all right, instead of 12 rings, what would it look like if there was 22 rings? So we'll play that. And now we get sort of a denser weave to our basket. Notice, too, that because we're using a variable, it's doing this math for us automatically. So we don't have to uh, plug in that number and figure it out for every time we want to change our, our variable. 
um, what would it look like if the radius of each ring was 35 instead of 25? We can easily update that number. All right, now we've got a bigger basket. It's going to make our base look a little funny. We need to change that. So I'm going to go back down to 25 for that. What if each torus only had six sides? Let's try that. All right, so that gives us a pretty different look. That's a, that's a neat basket right there and, and gives a, you know, really changing the profile of the sides and the top. What if the tube were a lot thinner? Let's play with that. Okay, so that's a finer kind of a weave for the basket. Two, I can, uh, I'm going to put the two back up at two. Uh, what if we knock the steps down to six? I'm going to play that, and we'll see that that's kind of the facets of each torus side, and you can see it gives us a more angular look. That's pretty neat. Um, another thing to play with is this Y, how far we're sliding it on Y. If I did like 45, that's going to give a much wider base, right? And I'd need to adjust my, my dome if I want to do that, or, I, you know, who knows what I want to do with the bottom there. I'm going to go back down to 35. I could also play with how the steepness of the angle that I'm tilting it at. So I'm going to say, all right, tilt up or uh, rotate around X by just 45 instead of 50. So that's going to be a more kind of relaxed angle. So those are some of the different attributes of your basket that you can play with. And then you would need to adjust uh, your... Um, the scale of, of your dome or whatever shape you're using for a base and and you need to move it up so it's in proper contact like here you see I'd need to I need to play with the dome because it's not even touching at the moment um, and then once you do that you're you're ready to export for 3d printing as an STL or an OBJ and uh, as long as everything is in contact with other parts uh, it doesn't it's actually okay, like this base, for example, is a tiny bit under the work plane, which would be fine because when it exports to your 3D printer, it's just going to put it on the print plate. It's not going to try to print below the, the plate. All right, so there's a quick tour of, some, of how to make a basket with torus shapes in code blocks and some different ways to play and experiment and um, iterate your code. Mm -hmm.